The term soulmate used to be really hot, everyone wanted one. It was a frequent topic discussed by female celebs on Oprah and other daytime shows. But now soulmate seems old-fashioned, because the phrase twin flames has entered the mainstream lexicon. Now all dating app hookups are twin flames potential, and every 18-year-old thinks its romantic partner is its twin flame. Humans are high conformists. Why do we do what we are told? Why do we ride the trends without asking questions? Why do we desire what we are pushed to want? And then there is peer pressure, perhaps one of the most powerful oppressive forces. Very little of who you think you are is the real you. But first what really is Twin Flames? What is Twin Flames? It's about polarity. One of the fundamental laws of our universe is polarity. You can't have electricity to charge your phone without both a negative and a positive force. For every North Pole there is a South. That of course also translates into universal procreation of species with male and female polarity. The concept of Twin Flames is that, there is a soul out there in this vast universe that matches your polarity. It is the negative to your positive charge and vice versa. I actually think that's too limiting. Is Twin Flames a romantic fantasy? Considering there are possibly trillions upon many trillions of souls out there, that massive volume would point to a much wider margin. Remember, most of what's being said about spirituality is a big fat lie. They all have been intentionally twisted to keep you tied down and dependent on other non-existent forces, such as individuals who dictate to you what's right or wrong, deities, planets, any and all ISMs, superstition, all diets, fear-induced emotional control enforcements and so on. What is not Twin Flames? I was watching a bit of Sophia and Sistine Stallone's talk show, Unwaxed Podcast, on YouTube when they were interviewing their mom, Jennifer Flavin. Sistine comes across as more level-headed and Sophia as new agey. I've enjoyed meeting many Sophias in my years of being involved with spiritual growth, performances and roomy. I think their differences are actually a nice match for the show. You don't want your hosts to be super alike. Conflict is good for ratings. Sly Stallone is inspiring. The reason I decided to catch up on the Stallones, is because I consider Sylvester Stallone an inspiration. He is one of the most dedicated fitness and nutrition experts. As someone who is also seriously into nutrition and fitness, I work out daily, I admire the fact that throughout his incredible career, he has never been out of shape, except for the movie Copland, where he then dropped the weight after the film rather instantly. To be really fit in your 20s is a cinch but past your 50s is miraculous. Sly is 75. Sophia Stallone's Definition Sophia Stallone mentioned that Twin Flames means when two people have a totally matching horoscope. Hmm, no. Also she said she may be Twin Flames with someone because they showed up at some party or event dressed the same, that's just too cute. Ignore the horoscope. 98% of the concept of the horoscope is nonsense. There is a reason most people may believe in it when they are in their 20s while still exploring their personality, but once they get older they toss it out. Horoscope is a fantasy. The 2% that's real, however, is about your key, cardinal, signs. Yes, Libras, like myself, may have a slightly different personality type than a Scorpio. Those base key zodiac sign characteristics often match a person when they are young, but don't last throughout their lifetime, if they are soul explorers. That's because we constantly grow, learn and change. Nothing governs you. It's extremely important for this point to sink in, that nothing governs you. Certainly not the planets, nor the moon, which is seemingly artificial anyway. There is no force more powerful than your own spirit and there is no destiny preset for you. You are it. This universe was created only so you can experience it, without you, it doesn't exist. All a simulation, there is no karma, there is only attachment. The Matrix movie universe is perhaps one of the most instrumental vehicles in awakening the public to the concepts of ascension and our perceived reality as mere illusion. The great mystics of the past consistently warned, those who were ready to listen, with the three rules of ascension and true freedom from this planet of fear, violence and oppression. Those rules are, intention, overcoming fear and lack of attachments. I don't use the word karma, because it doesn't exist. It's just another method of control and fear-inducing terminology. There is no such thing as karma, nothing binds you to anything, except your own desires, wants and needs. The universe is a projection of your own mind and psyche. When you learn to expand your mind and shake up your attachments and dust off your false beliefs, your consciousness expands many folds. Soulmates, twin flames or hormones. Think of the concept of attachment in this way. Person A is 18 year old who feels deeply in love with person B they tell one another every day how much they love each other. They use terms like soulmates and twin flames. A couple of years later, 
person A is totally over the whole thing and doesn't even want to hear from person B. In fact, PA kicks itself later for being so naive and feeling so silly. Where did all that love, need, dependency and attachment go? Nowhere. The entity in this example has now moved beyond that phase and that particular attachment no longer binds it. Person A now directs its energy to new interests. Soulmates, twin flames, soul groups or just comfort energy. In addition to the concept of twin flames there is also the notion of soul groups, monad or unified cluster. This means that your spirit may be linked with a few hundred or, many, thousands of others. Some people have come up with diagrams about these things, but they aren't accurate. They mostly get their info from channeling entities who pretend to be benevolent, but they are almost all malevolent and their sole purpose is confusing those with good intentions with nonsensical and opposing data to keep them small, limited, dependent and bound to this planet. Since the spiritual world generally attracts a type of person who may be too trusting, they buy into it. The Global Savior Dogma Corey Good, whom I think is sincere, for a long time was preaching the notion that we'll be saved by the ETs, I'd wonder when he was going to wake up from that dream. That was until recently when he recanted on his YouTube channel, Sphere Being Alliance, saying there are no saviors, we're all on our own. Of course Corey, there is no free elevation to higher consciousness levels and densities. The savior concept is an invention and a control tactic used to keep the public meek and easily regulated. It programs people to give up intention and control because a savior will take care of everything for them. This is a very successful dark force tactic, that unfortunately governs all of our planet, you can't have fourth or fifth density realms occupied by all third density souls. That realm would simply revert back to being third density. Growth is earned. Ascension and growth are earned, they are not given. In fact, no being has that power. Remember, all intelligent life with a soul in this universe is going through the same growth process. The difference is that super advanced technology can enhance and accelerate the learning. You can also accomplish a lot more if you lived for 5000 years instead of 70, as long as the conditions are favorable for joy, dignity, growth and expansion. We are the immortals. If you've kept up with my writings, you'd know that although we are spiritually immortal, but when we occupy these low-grade bodies on this low-density planet, we can't expect too many miracles. They will emerge later, in higher dimensions or in the spiritual realms. Concepts like twin flames and such are rather impossible at this primitive level. Even if there is a meet of the two at this level, there is a good chance one of the parties involved, or both, will dash out of the relationship at warp speed. Such connections could prove highly distressful at this basic level of physicality. Humans carry many layers of emotional baggage in addition to traumas from current and past lives. Mutually similar childhood programming. Do not confuse feeling comfortable with someone. As anything but mutually similar childhood programming, a dating trend or vibrational harmony. Also, globally speaking, most women are programmed to bond with their husbands no matter what. Hence they convince themselves with such unfortunate self-brainwashing terms such as, it was meant to be, or we were disdained. Yikes! You are Alpha and Omega. You are the beginning and the end. You are the Alpha and the Omega. When you exist, everything exists and when your soul doesn't exist anymore nothing does. Don't occupy so much of your time with horoscopes, astrology, so-called gurus, bowing to idiotic statues and finding soulmates. Don't you ever wonder, why every 18 year old is in love with the love of their life. Just so to move on a bit later and be with the next love of their life. And so on and so on. You're driven by your hormones and cultural trends. We are biological androids. I call these bottom shelf bodies, fast decaying biological shells that are chemically dependent. I also called them biological androids. 98% of who you think you are is dictated to you by your hormones. Your hormones, based on your age group totally run your whole body, hence your life. You are not your bodies. Stop being tossed around by every catchphrase that's being pushed by the mainstream. The greatest takeaway from all this has already been explored in the Matrix universe. You can easily bend the laws of physics or rules of human interaction if you fully believe in yourself and your own infinite power. You are eternal. You are all powerful. All you need is clarity of intention and love for yourself. Be empowered.